Hi, today I'd like to show you how to draw flames and project a nice orange light onto your surfaces with Copic markers. Maybe this will be useful for you for some of your Halloween or autumn projects. I'll be colouring this digital stamp from Twistoon. I'll put the link in the description if you would like to get the image to follow along with the video yourself. So I'm starting out by colouring the Plague Doctor using four different shades of blue and purple. The three darker colours, BV29, C7 and B45, will cover most of the image, leaving only a few highlights with the lighter blue. I use BG10 on the mask and in the eyes to give a few hints of green so that the image doesn't look too monotone. E27, Y26 and Y38 make a nice golden colour. I've used this in the lamp and on the leather bag. When you colour, when you shade with these colours it's as if uh, the, the gold uh, uh, happens by itself. You don't really have to do a lot of work for for it to look like uh, metal, which is quite handy. You'll notice that as I'm doing this, I'm not leaving any spaces to put the orange light in afterwards. This is because, with Copics at least, I haven't tried yet with other markers, you can add a lighter colour over a darker tone. Sometimes the lighter colour will even seem the more dominant. It doesn't mix like paint would, where if I put orange over blue, it would just end up looking like a dark grey or a brown. You can get some nice effects with this. With alcohol markers, the colour that is most dominant in most cases seems to be the last colour you put down. Or, if you want to insist enough, it can completely wash the colour that's below out. This is one of the little mistakes I made while I was learning to colour with Copics. I had put a yellow over a dark blue and I thought that I would get a green but it just kind of created a yellow light over it. I like the effect that that gives so I keep using it now. You could also leave some white space in order to add the colour of the reflection afterwards if you would like a much brighter effect. This does, of course, take a little more planning. Just experiment and see what you prefer. I'm using blue tones for the Plague Doctor. I think this will go very well with the orange light, as blue and orange are complementary colours, so it should make the image very striking. Here I'm colouring the flame in the lamp for you in real time. <laughs> for a flame, the technique is quite simple. You're colouring the outside of the flame in a darker colour. Here it is dark red. And the inside of the flame, the lighter colour. Here a light yellow. And I'll get to that in a second. You could get this same effect with different colours, like a purple or a green flame. Just make sure that the colours that you are blending are clean, because a flame is made of light, it can't have shadow. What I mean by it not having shadow is that the variation in a flame is made from the difference in the colour of light that it is giving off. It's energy rather than the difference in light it, it, it is absorbing like a shadow. So bear in mind this when you are choosing your colours. You of course don't have to count on the fact that your rendition of a flame is fantastic. Sometimes just the fact that a flame is contained in a lamp or on a comp campfire is enough for people to know what you are getting at. 
So, once you've coloured the flame, we can then look at the way that the light will be hitting the objects around it. For instance, the right side of the skirt here, the bottom of the hand, the right side of the bag, and so on. You have to think of it as if you are shading, where you are looking at places that the light won't hit, but it's the opposite. Now, that you're look now you're going to be looking at the places where the light hits and giving them colour. Try to give hints of the same reflected colour even in the shaded parts of your drawing, like on the opposite side of the torch. Just don't overdo it. This is because unless you're looking at a completely black object where there's no light being reflected, there is going to be some light coming back and that light being a reflection of your light source and so the same colour. Light doesn't just hit one surface, it actually bounces until it's completely absorbed. So even though an object is in shade, it's going to be uh, reflecting the colour of your light source at some point. But try not to overdo this though, whether you're painting or colouring, there is a place for physics and logic and there's a place for fantasy. Here, we want people to be looking at the colouring and saying, wow, look at how that torch is reflecting that orange light. And it's not really, wow, I can see how it's uh, completely realistic and, and so on. So bear in mind that when you're colouring this piece, your objective is going to be the, the highlight of the orange light and, and that wow factor. So, to recap, for a flame, we're drawing the outside of the flame in a darker colour and finishing with a near white colour in the inside of the flame. Then, of course, we're colouring the objects surrounding the flame with the, mem with the same colour. I hope you've enjoyed this and that it's useful for you. Uh, have a lovely weekend. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.